Another type of circular motion we consider in Year 12 Physics is vertical circular motion. And importantly, we only consider three different situations. Uh, ex it's explicitly stated that we only consider uh, motion at the top and at the bottom of a circle. Uh, so we consider the inside at the bottom and at the top, and also uh, an object moving around the outside of a circle at the top of its motion. And we're going to be dealing with, again, the net force. Worth remembering that it's equal to mv squared on r, and it's always towards the center of the circular motion. And we're going to be adding together two forces, the weight force and the normal reaction force, and they're going to be combining to give our net force. That's the general pattern of these three situations. Okay, so at the bottom of a loop, say at the, at the bottom of a roller coaster dip or something, uh, we have the object at the bottom there, and of course the weight force is the easiest one to draw, always act straight down, uh, and the normal reaction force will act upwards between the surface and that vehicle. And because this is in circular motion, we know that the net force, the combination of these two forces, must be upwards towards the center. And so this simple little diagram lets us write an expression for the net force. So we know that the net force comes from, it's the resultant force of these two forces combining. So we look carefully at the direction of these arrows that we've drawn, and we see that the normal is in the same direction as the net force. So it will take a positive sign. The weight force is in the opposite direction. It points down relative to the net force, and so it takes a negative sign. So we have this expression for the net force, mv squared on r equals n minus mg. And so from that expression, lots of things can be found, such as the velocity, r, uh, the apparent weight of a person in this situation will be equal to n. And so that can be calculated uh, from this expression. And so the, the number of g-forces you might experience or your apparent weight at the bottom of that loop can be found that way. At the top of the loop, uh, again, we're considering two forces. We're considering a weight force directly down and the normal reaction force between the, the surface and the vehicle will again act down. And because this is in circular motion, the net force, the resultant force, the addition, the sum of these two forces must point directly down as well. So by the same process of addition, uh, we look carefully at the direction of these three arrows. We see they're all in the same direction and so they will all take a positive sign. So net force equals mg plus the normal in this situation. Uh, and so you should be able to see that the normal reaction force will be quite small in this situation. Obviously your weight force can't change. What can change is your normal reaction force. So you'll feel quite light if you're in this situation, if you're in a, a roller coaster carriage up the top of a loop. You'll feel quite light up there. Uh, as you move slower and slower around this loop, your normal force will become smaller and smaller until you reach apparent weightlessness when your normal reaction force equals zero when the track stops pushing on you. That is the point at which you will lose contact. Uh, and so because this equals mv squared on r, uh, we can say that the minimum speed, the v min, uh, the point at which you will lose contact, the minimum speed you can take around there is equal to the square root of r times g. Uh, just from this expression here where n goes to zero and n's cancel out. So the minimum speed, the point at which you will experience apparent weightlessness, uh, is this v min, the square root of rg. Any slower than that, and you'll lose contact and fall from the top of the loop. Going over the uh, vehicle going over the crest of uh, a rise, we consider this a, an example of circular motion. Uh, you might have seen rally cars going over uh, the crest of a hill and becoming airborne. Uh, so again, we have a weight force that acts straight down. And in this case, the normal reaction force actually acts vertically up. And because it's in circular motion about the center, the, about a, a circle, the net force must act downwards towards the center of that motion. 
and so by the same principle again considering the, the direction of these arrows we come up with the expression that net force equals mg because net force and mg are in the same direction minus n in this case. Very important that you're able to sketch these diagrams and derive these formulas. So this is another case where your normal force will tend to become quite small and you will approach the feeling of apparent weightlessness uh, as that normal approaches zero and so because again the net force equals mv squared on r uh, you will experience weightlessness when your normal reaction force equals zero and you will in fact lose contact with the road at that point so again the same expression the V max this time, the fastest that you can go over this crest without losing contact with the road, or the point at which you will lose contact with the road, the V max is the square root of RG again by a similar process as before. Looking at this where N goes to zero and the M's cancel out. So any faster than this speed and you will actually become airborne. So at this speed you will experience apparent weightlessness.